Let's solve y prime minus x squared times y equals zero using series. So we'll let y equal the sum from n equals zero to infinity of c sub n times x to the n. The derivative, we're gonna start it from n equals one to infinity and then take the derivative of c to the n, the c sub n times x to the n. That is n times c sub n times x to the n minus one. And now we're going to replace y and y prime into the differential equation here. And what I did was I skipped a step and I just added x squared times y to both sides like this. And so this x squared now is going to distribute inside the sum here because it does not depend on n. So that's gonna be x to the n plus two. Now the problem is that this starts at n equals one, this starts at n equals zero, and then this is n to the minus n minus one and this is n plus two. Ideally you want to have things start at x to the n and n equals zero. So for us, if you're going to uh, get the one down to zero, if you decrease this by one, you're gonna increase the ends by one inside here. So we have n equals zero and then n plus one c sub n plus one, x to the n. Now I didn't do anything to the right side, so I want to work on the x to the n plus two because that's a different exponent as x to the n. So what I did was, I want them to start at the same spot at n, at n equals two. So if I make this go up by two, these ends have to go down by two. So c sub n minus two and then x to the n power. Now, if this starts at n equals two, that means n equals zero, n equals one, and now we can have like n equals two, n equals three, et cetera. So plug in n equals zero, with, we're left with one times c, c sub one times x to the zero, which is just c sub one. And then when n equals one, you have one plus one is two, c sub two, x to the first power. At this point, you can compare both sides. We don't have a c sub, c sub one here, right? So this one, when you plug in n equals two, you get c sub zero x squared. And then when you plug in n equals three, you have c sub one x cubed. Okay, so this c sub one, this is a constant. There's no constant by itself here. So it has to be zero. Likewise, there is no x here. It starts at x squared, it goes up x cubed, x to the fourth, etc. So c sub two should also be zero. Okay, now, when getting rid of these two, these are all zero, you basically have the sum of n plus one of times c sub n plus one x to the n. That's gonna equal c sub, sorry, sum from n equals two to infinity for both of these, and then this is gonna be c sub n minus two times x to the n. And what I did here was I just set the insides equal to each other. So I, I ignored the x to the n and just set c, n plus one times c sub n plus one equals c sub n minus two. Now I can solve for c sub n plus one, and we know that this works for n being greater than or equal to two. Because recall, when we did n equals zero and n equals one, those terms are both zero. So this works from n equals two. So if we go back, these sums start at n equals two. So we set those equal, these sums equal to each other and n had to be greater than or equal to two. Okay, so if I plug in n equals two, I have c sub zero over three. Plug in n equals three, I have c sub one over four. And we said c sub one was zero, so zero over four is zero. N equals four, c sub five would be c sub two over five. And remember, c sub one was a constant, c sub two was a con the coefficient of x, and that was both zero. Now when n is five, we have c sub six, 
equals c sub 3 over 6 and c sub 3 was c sub 0 over 3 so it's like c sub 0 over 3 divided by n plus 1 which is 6 so that could be rewritten as c sub 0 over 3 times 6 same story here c sub 7 we know c sub 4 is 0 and then when we get to c sub 9 that is c sub 6 over 9 and c sub 6 was c sub 0 over 3 times 6 so that's why these two are equal etc so basically what you're looking at is every 3 you get a non-zero term so it's like 1 2 3 1 2 3 so it's every 3 you get something that is not uh, 0 and the form is going to be c sub 0 at the top c sub 0 and then a multiple of 3 so it's like 3 times 1 3 times 2 3 times 3 3 times 4 etc so it could be rewritten as this form so now we can look at um, the solution we know this was y we set y equal to this originally now we found uh, c sub 3 sub n here so we know that c sub 1 well we look at every 3 so it's like c sub 0 c sub 3 c sub 6 9 etc and we know it's going to be c sub 0 over 3 c sub 0 over 6 times 3 c sub 0 9 times 6 times 3 and the largest um, factor in the denominator will be the exponent of x so it's like 3 3 6 6 9 9 etc so now I can rewrite this and say okay 6 is just 3 or I say 2 times 3 times 3 9 this 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 and then there's a 2 so it's like okay this is 3 cubed and this is 3 factorial this part this is well 3 squared and this is 2 factorial and you can say well this is 3 to the first power times 1 factorial so we're just looking at the denominator here and there's clearly a pattern so now I can put I can factor out at c sub 0 and have this and so this is just going to be c sub 0 times e to the x cubed over 3 so recall that e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x3 x cubed over 3 factorial etc but the difference here is I have x cubed over 3 in the parentheses Like this and so whatever is in the parentheses whatever is being cubed or sorry whatever is going to be the base of the exponent is the exponent of e so therefore this is e to the x cubed over 3 now we can write out the first eight terms so all I do is just take this formula here basically and just write out the first eight terms and then simplifying it we get that this is the eight terms.